Welcome to the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel, featuring another special guest here today from Boise, Idaho, the one and the only Steve Russin. Steve, good to catch up with you. See you're uh, Natalie attired, and uh, you've got some props along with you as well, too. Talk about that 1979 uh, undefeated North Tonawanda football team. How's things in Boise these days? Oh, warming up. Snow's melting. We'll be in springtime. Be mountain biking. Be wonderful. Get some golf in as well. You keep, you look like you're in a fabulous shape still. And, and a guy who's probably in his late 50s, how do you maintain such a great physique? Well, uh, 20 years in the Air Force when they send us out in the middle of nowhere and sleep in a tent and fly and have nothing to do but work out and, you know, keeps you in shape. And then I, uh, I've been at Southwest Airlines for 17 years. So uh, get a lot of time to get some fitness in on the road. There's a, a bunch of guys that uh, I actually work out with. We're gonna, we're gonna do a 140 mile mountain bike tour in September to celebrate our uh, 60th birthdays. Wow, 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 wow. Not bad for a kid from the avenues, making it in the uh, Air Force Academy, now a, a pilot in the uh, Southwest Airlines and also you know, living out in Boise, Idaho. Kidding you beforehand that you're one of the very few Polish uh, Polish families in Idaho, probably. Oh no! Like there's a there was an old Polish guy from Lackawanna had a hot dog stand. He flew in sailors every week. I took my kids there. They got hooked on him. Beautiful. I want to get going with talking about your high school career at North Tonawanda. Um, everybody knows your brother Stan was five years ahead of you. Uh, could have been an influence in your in your career or a hindrance, depending on how you look at it. And I'm sure maybe there was a little bit that happened uh, both ways with that. Talk to us about your, uh, growing up in North Tonawanda and, and you're getting into high school, getting into football, then in high school football. Yeah, I, it was just the, the amazing community situation there in the afternoons. Um, my father was born in the house across the street in the front bedroom. The house we lived in was a vacant lot that they farmed vegetables in my my grandfather worked down the street at the steel mill so growing up all, all the neighbors grew up with my dad um you know we were always out doing something uh i, I think i still have gravel in my knees from the ukrainian hall uh parking lot we, we played we played touch football in that thing but i, I think eventually in bishop gibbons kind of uh closed down we, we played over there you know, when the, when the fields behind uh, the Mo Pool would freeze over, we'd play pond hockey out there. Otherwise, we'd be, uh, you know, playing street hockey. So we're always on the move, always doing stuff. Um, you know, there's some great youth sports back then. I, I got in that, you know, the Tiger Cat organization. And I remember uh, my brother won the uh, Norm Kelleher Trophy. Keller Trophy. And uh, there's a huge trophy, and I, you know, I, I just look at that, and you know, that'd be a goal to be as good as a football player as my brother someday. I want to fast forward with you at this point uh, to your varsity season in 1978 and 1979. Coach was Dave Anastasi back then. What do you recall about Coach Anastasi back then, and, and the those teams that you played on? Well, uh, it was just a, a continuation from. Uh, playing a uh, freshman, Dave Vona was my freshman coach. And then uh, as I moved on to, to JV, uh, Fran Burke had been my elementary uh, PE teacher. And in fact, um, he called me Stash because that's what he called my brother. And that was my nickname in high school because all the coaches called me Stash. So, and then, you know, moved up to, like I say, uh, JV, Fran Burke. And then, you know, that, that was, you know, Anastasi, uh, Dave Vona, uh, John Cicera. You know, they, they just worked really well as a team. Uh, Anastasi was a great motivator, you know, kept us on track. We had, we had, a, we had a wide range of personalities on that team and, um, you know, kept us in focus. We had just, just great players and a great continuity, especially coming from uh, junior to senior year. Our line, we only, we only lost one guy. And we replaced him with Dan Welchoff, who was a really big, strong kid that played a great job at tackle. So uh, all the pieces fit together to, to, have, to make a run and have a, a championship year. On that line, besides Welchock, you had Mike Hall, who ended up in the Hall of Fame, Frank Jastrzemski, who ended up in the Hall of Fame. You've made a run at the Hall of Fame a few times, have, have, have fallen short. Kind of tough for, for linemen to, to get into the Hall of Fame at that point. 
What would it mean to you when you are inducted into the North Tonawanda Hall of Fame? And the reason why I say when is because you, you know, your senior year, you were named to several all-star teams and um, your resume is up there with the best of them. So what would it be? How, what would it be like to, to join your brother in the Hall of Fame? Well, I'd, be, I'd be totally honored to, uh, you know, like I said, it was always my goal to achieve as high as my brother did. I, in fact, I, I wore the same number, 67. And uh, he was the punter. I, I, I was the kickoff specialist. So, uh, and then, you know, just all the hard work I put in, you know, grinding, you know, going to the old universal gym they had in the garage and in the, in the back of the uh, high school, you know, that uh, the, the uh, I remember Coach A would have that open a couple of nights a week during the winter and, you know, walk, walk into the cold to go bang weights around and, uh, you know, all, all that hard work put in to, you know, finally, you know, join the, the rest of the great other players, especially, you know, you mentioned uh, Mike Hole and Frank Dissenti, Lou Parrish, who is an amazing athlete and our quarterback as well. Yeah. Then 1979 team, except for a sweet home where you tied 14-14, uh, you had a very good team. And then you end up going to the, the sectional final, which was known as the Federation Championship right there at that point. It was also held at Rich Stadium, which is now known as Ralph Wilson Stadium. Um, memorable game because it went to overtime and you guys ended up winning 17-14. to 14. Um, What do you recall about that game? Well, uh, I was pr privileged enough to go to the, uh, the Players' Day with uh, Lou Parrish. I think Michael, even, even though Tim Gibson's knee was, was hurting, he, he, he showed up to that. Uh, Frank Jacemsky, who met a bunch of the Bills. Lou Parrish told the shoe the, the story about Joe Delamalier's shoes, which was hilarious. And then, you know, just to run out on that field and, and, and look out the lights and be out there. And uh, I, uh, Lou, Lou talked about the play at the end of the game where he had thrown the pick and uh, Henry Otizak stripped the ball and I, I it bounced right into me. And that was, that was, that was almost redemption because uh, the last, last year we lost to Tonawanda. And I, I came that close to being the hero of the game. You know, as they line up for the extra point, I, I beat my block. I was in a pervert position to block it. But the, the, the snap went through the holder's hands, the kicker, and I was going one way, and they went the other, and they scored the two-pointer and won the game. So that was a, a chance to kind of re, redeem myself. I, I, that fumble recovery, I think I had a sack and a couple other good tackles there. I, I was playing both ways, uh, guard and defensive end. So uh, just an amazing game to go to overtime there. You know, we're playing against Ron Pitts, you know, was uh, who went to UCLA and played in the pros. I remember the two-point conversion. They actually came on a sweep my way, and I, I think I took out a double team, and then the rest of the guys uh, caught up and, and stopped them at, like, the half-yard line. So it was, a, it was just a great game, and, it, you know, what a, what a way to finish your career. And then the, the, the Tonawanda game the next week. And that championship game as well, too, they, they didn't run to your side very often. They ran to the, to the right instead of coming to the left that way. Um, it's got to be quite the honor because they, they didn't want anything to do with you during that game, the Orchard Park folks. Um, you guys also, in the overtime, Orchard Park had the first possession in overtime, and they didn't want to settle for a field goal. They decided they wanted to run it down your throats. And the guys made a great goal line stand at that play as well, too. Quarterback tried to... Uh, dances way into the end zone. Of course, the other side of the field away from you, but, um, and then you guys came down and, and then kicked, kicked the winning field goal. You were also holding the trophy at the uh, midfield after the game. What was, if you can recall, what was going through your head at that point? Uh, just the total joy and elation of a, of a hard fought season. And, uh, you know, it started way back, you know, we, the year before was the first year we went out, you know, the training camp down there in uh, Dunkirk. It, I think it was some kind of uh, church group area. And um, it was kind of funny that the first year we didn't really know what we were getting into. So Mike Hull and I roomed together. I think we had like one bag of Starburst fruit, fruit, fruit chews was our, our, our food kitty. The next year when you're seniors, our room had six coolers. We, we like skipped meals at the, at the dining hall and, and had our own meals. You know, we, we did it in style, but uh and it's you know, all these guys like for Frank Jastrzemski, we 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 were together since kindergarten, and um, you know all the guys you know, I've been with my whole high school career to to, to reach and, and play in a championship and, and, and win it. You know, just 
especially in the Bills Stadium. And it was the first time that had been done. So it was quite an overwhelming feeling. What were those Dunkirk camps like? Was it, was it a bonding type situation or were all business? Was it getting to know each other? Was it uh, getting away from distractions and um, learning the, the playbook? I mean, what was it like? Oh, it was uh, the, the co Coach A and, and Bona and uh, Chiseo, they ran a tough camp. It was three a days. And, uh, you know, it was really, you know, getting the nuts and bolts, walking and tackling. You know, yeah, there's a lot of some team bonding. I remember we, we hiked down the cliffs and went swimming. But, uh, you know, it was no nonsense. I remember we were talking one night, and uh, I, I think it was Coach Bona was outside. He was like, 540s. And we wouldn't shut up. 10, 40, you know, we had to do like 20, 40 yard sprints after practice because we were talking, you know, staying up too late. So uh, it was it was a great time and a great, and a great just just by being there, bonding with all your teammates. If you were met somebody off the street or somebody in, in Idaho and you started talking about high school football, what would you tell them about North Tonawanda football? Um, you know, it was just a just a, a special place to play. It, it had so much tradition and. Uh, and, you know, legacy to it, you know, the TNT game over a hundred years old, one of the, the oldest rivalries, I think going out there and uh, just how I was lucky to be a part of it. And that, you know, and, and even all the pieces came to be together to be on a championship team and, uh, you know, and uh, rise up to the level my, my brother rose up to and, uh, and being a leader and a, and a captain on, the, on something about it. What kind of uh, memories and stories do, do you have from those days is something that you can share with us? Um, I, I think a, a funny one going back to freshman football, uh, tossing the ball around before practice, I, I, I jammed my pinky and it was, you know, kind of really distorted. And uh, Coach Vona was like, ah, oh, Nick Seaback, he's got one like that. You'll be fine. We'll just tape it up. But uh, my mother was like, well, you, you won't get in the Air Force Academy with a, with a finger like that. So she took me to the doctor and they, they splinted. I missed, I missed a game. And, and Coach Vona was like, oh, those doctors. They don't know anything, you know, so. They wouldn't, so. they wouldn't let you just pull it out and straighten it out. You had to go see a specialist, right? No, I think it was just my general practitioner. They just put a plastic splint on it. But I, you know, Coach Rona wanted me to just, you know, tape it up and let's get, get on business. Do you have any regrets about your high school football career? Oh, no, not, not at all. Uh, like I said, I was, I was, I, I did the grind, you know, all the, all the, all the weightlifting, you know, off season, on season, even, you know, coach Vona said, Hey, wrestling would be good for you guys. You guys go wrestle. So when we were in ninth grade, so uh, Tim Gibson and I, and uh, John Keenan, who didn't play after uh, freshman ball, we'd walk from Payne over to the, the senior high to, to, to wrestle. And, uh, and I put up with that, especially um, Sal Manasani class of uh he, he was in 79. He was my weight and he was really good. So I was never going to wrestle varsity at his level. So I, I had to cut weight to, to wrestle varsity, which I hated, you know, eating a, a, a thing of fruit cocktail for, for lunch and, you know, losing weight. But I, I suffered through that because it, it was, you know, it was a, it was a good off season, season sport to, you know, build me up for football. <laughs> Did you learn some techniques that you applied for football, applied to football at that point? Probably because, you know, I, I was, uh, you know, somewhat undersized uh, offensive lineman. So just being able to le leverage people, um, you know, I kind of hit my, my limit in, in high school at the Air Force Academy. In fact, uh, a friend of mine, we played Virginia Tech our senior year in the Liberty Bowl and he lined up against Bruce Smith. So <laughs> just to, yeah, I, I, I probably wouldn't have done too well against Bruce Smith. <laughs> Did you have any trouble after high school? Did you have any trouble taking off the, the helmet and hanging up the spikes? Um, not at the, it was kind of fun at the Air Force Academy. We had intramurals between the cadet squadrons. We had eight man football. So you, you had a lot of really good football players that maybe weren't, you know, big enough or fast enough to you know, play. I mean, we were a D1 school. We played Notre Dame. We played BYU. You know, we were in the whack, but you know, this eight man full contact pads, that was a, a riot. And then, uh, I eventually got, I got into parachuting and uh, joined the parachute team my sophomore year. And uh, I finished with 737 jumps. And uh, while all the guys were marching in parades or inspections on Saturdays, I was jumping into air shows. And uh, so it was, uh, 
it was I just moved on to a, another sport and uh, had built some great comrade camaraderie and, and teammanship there. From what you did and what you accomplished in your uh, and what you just described, did you ever uh, ever occur to you that, that you, you pinch yourself and you stop and think and said, "This isn't so bad for a kid from NT." Oh yeah, I, uh, I, you know, just like I say, coming up from the avenues, just a middle middle class kid that uh, had a dream. I was, I was in that uh, major progress program, fifth and sixth grade. It was kind of an accelerated program. They took the the kids with the best grades and put them in meadow in a, in a program. And I, I wrote a term paper like that said about the air force. And I wanted to go to the air force again and be a jet pilot someday. And you know, it all worked out. Speaking of grades, you were no slouch either with that as well too. They had the TV program back in Western New York called it's academic. And you were one of the NT representatives, not for one year, but two years. Talk about that experience as well too. Oh, that was fun. Uh, if you remember, uh, Mr. Verano, who was the, I think the vice principal Rezel, he was the, the, the coordinator for it. And uh, we'd go over to his house and we'd watch the shows. Uh, my teammates were Bob Kornfeld, who went to Harvard, and uh, Jack Morano, who went to uh, Niagara University. And uh, I, I don't know, I, I just have, I have a good, good knack for uh, obscure data. I'd be great to be on your triple pursuit team. But uh, I remember it was so fun because I they handed out tickets for the uh, audience and all my football player buddies and their NT varsity jackets were in the audience there and, and Van Miller was the host, so uh, that that was a pretty special experience to go go on and do that for two years, you know, representing North Tonawanda. What did you learn from North Tonawanda, whether it be academically or uh, from football or even wrestling, um, that still applies today? Uh, for you and maybe you share that information with your kids well you know just uh having goals sticking to them having the discipline to uh you know to whether study more or work hard harder you know that just you know stick stick to your goals and you know aim high you know um and, you know um let me think here i'd say you know the, the biggest thing just uh to appreciate the, the mentorship you received from, I had so many great coaches and teachers and I made a point of, uh, you know, trying to keep in touch with them and, uh, you know, giving them a sense, sense of my, my accomplishment was, you know, on their shoulders. So, uh, you know, giving back to, to those who helped you get along. You're a man who knows his roots very well. Steve Russell and I appreciate your time this today. I wish you well, I wish you good health. Um, I envy you being in Boise, Idaho, and, and those wonderful uh, views that uh, you have there and, the, and that part of the country. And I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks a lot, Ed.